protect your DNA. BioPQQ can promote formation of new mitochondria. InfoWarsStore.com Welcome back to the InfoWars Nightly News. Hey, what do you think about wellness checks? Operation Vigilant Guard. Well, Rob Dew has evidence that wellness checks is really a special code for gun confiscation. Rob Dew reporting for InfoWars.com, PrisonPlanet.tv, and InfoWars Nightly News. On Monday, I reported on an activist post article that was detailing some exercises that were going on as part of Operation Vigilant Guard 2015, where the South Carolina National Guard was going door to door conducting wellness checks. We actually have video of them doing these checks, and here's what they said in their own words was the reason for conducting these checks. Uh, in this scenario, uh, what we have is this is the uh, aftermath of a, a hurricane has come and struck us, and uh, upon an evacuation notice, the subdivision of Overton, the, the residents chose not to leave. So we are doing a door-to-door -door wellness check. So he explains that the reason for the wellness checks is that people did not heed the government's warning to evacuate. And this is the same thing we saw in Hurricane Katrina. Remember the chief of police and his warning? Guns, guns will be taken. Yeah, no one will be able to be armed. We yes, will sir. take all yes, weapons. Sir. Sometimes entering open houses with guns drawn and instructions to disarm anyone inside. And it wasn't just the police going around confiscating guns. It was also the National Guard doing wellness checks. Residents were handcuffed on the ground. In the end, police took their weapons but let them stay in their homes. They were a little bit threatened because our weapons were bigger than their weapons. For many of the police and guard troops, it is an uncomfortable job to do this in an American city. Walking up and down these streets, you don't, you don't want to think about the stuff that you're going to have to do. If somebody pops around the corner. Let me shoot an American. Yeah. Nazi Germany, Cuba, People's Republic of China, North Korea, yes, but not America. Not America. Heed the warning of what this was. This is like Australia. All of a sudden, boom, they got our rights. This isn't freedom. If it can happen to me, it can happen to anybody. And the story doesn't end there. In 2012, we got a call from a member of the National Guard 45th Infantry Brigade out of Norman, Oklahoma, and he had this to say about the gun confiscation operations he participated in right after Hurricane Katrina. Um, I was with the 45th Infantry Brigade at Delta Company 1st of the 279 uh, 2nd Platoon um, during Hurricane Katrina. I've always wanted to get a hold of you guys and kind of get the word out there for those that still have that slight hesitation in the back of their head that gun confiscation can't and won't happen here. It already has. And I was only 21 years old, just really gung-ho, really dedicated to the Army, especially to the infantry. And uh, I did whatever I was told. Let's see. If, the first thing we did was we got a, a three-week uh, a book full of three-week-old 911 phone calls, right? And then we had to go around and answering all the phone calls. So we were like cadaver dogs for about three weeks. And in between them, we would run night missions. And here's the thing. A lot of people may think that they'll see this on the news or they'll have time to, to get ready when, you know, when, the, when the crap hits the fan or whatever. It's just, it, it's a truck, you know what I mean? It's a group of trucks, they pull up, they stack right on your home, as we did, and we broke entry. Yeah, we would yell out, Oklahoma Army National Guard, is anybody in need of assistance? But that's as we were booting in the door. Well, we had, uh, we had a couple of people uh, resist verbally, and they got stuffed and cuffed very violently. Uh, we'd throw them in the back of the, uh, the five-ton or the deuce and a half or whatever, and then we'd take them out to uh, the Greyhound bus station, which was the police station at the time. And here's another bit of evidence. From 2009, Alex Jones interviewing a Lieutenant Colonel Hapwood out of Iowa, detailing the gun confiscation operations they were running as part of a drill, of course. Guardsmen to conduct urban training at Arcadia in April. This is going on scale back now. It says in this article, going door to door, asking if they can search homes looking for weapons. And they practice raiding the local gun shop. Lieutenant Colonel, I really appreciate you coming on on such short notice, sir. My pleasure. Thanks for the invitation. You bet. Uh, I saw this uh, article out of the Daily Times Herald in Carroll, Iowa. H have you seen that? I sure have. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's telling us about an urban warfare drill to be held in several towns. Can, can you tell us about that? 
Sure. Uh, it's actually a, a planned training event uh, to provide uh, our soldiers with greater proficiency at what we call cordon and search, uh, which is a mission that, um, um, just for a little background, we've deployed nearly 13,000 members of the Iowa National Guard in the global war on terror. And the vast majority of those have been in Iraq and Afghanistan. And one of the missions that they perform in Iraq and Afghanistan on multiple occasions is cordon and search, where basically you are trying to, to get to an area, uh, cordon it off to make sure everything's safe, and then actually search for caches of weapons or other kinds of contraband which could harm um, American forces and other Like Fallujah, forces. what we saw in Correct. Fallujah. Mm-hmm. Correct. Exactly. So because of where we're located in Iowa, there are no active duty bases in Iowa. So we kind of have to create our own urban training environments. Uh, so the, the plan on this particular training event was to actually use a small town of about 450 people. Uh, the, the town has actually kind of adopted uh, the, the unit, which is called Company A, 1st Battalion, 168th Infantry. And uh, they, were, they were more than willing to participate in the exercise. Going through this article, I mean, explaining exactly what they're going to do door to door with the houses, what the checkpoints are going to be simulating. Sure. Um, when you're talking about coordinate search operations, you've got several different rings of security that you've got to provide in a particular area. And then it's important that people are treated respectfully as you go house to house, um, as you're looking for certain items, particularly in our experience in Afghanistan and Iraq, looking for weapon caches, uh, whether those have AK 47s. Um, RPGs, rock propel grenades, that is, uh, any kind of ammunition or any kind of improvised explosive devices, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And our job uh, when we go on a cordon search is to locate those kinds of items. And then there might also be persons of interest that we're interested in that coalition forces want to talk to or apprehend. Well, let's just boil it down to this. I have video of Army and Marines with role players screaming, I'm an American, please don't put me in the camp, uh, and the military trying to confiscate their firearms. I mean, certainly you've heard the Army Times and the new director from Secretary of Defense, Robert Gage, that they will use the National Guard under federal control uh, for civil insurrection. Are you, are you saying you're not aware of that? No, I'm certainly aware of that, absolutely. But I think you have to look at the role of the National Guard historically is that historically um, we are used uh, in states uh, for disasters overwhelmingly. And our job is to, number one, be ready for uh, our mission uh, federally, which is to go to war. And number two is to help our fellow citizens mm-hmm. here in the United States of America. Mm-hmm. Those but are the, the Army that we prepare for and train for. The Army War College three weeks ago issued a report saying they're shifting a lot of their focus to engaging the American people and directives on engagement with the American people under NORTHCOM. Well, you got to remember that the National Guard, 99% of the time, is, in, if you're talking about peacetime, belongs to the state in which they are located. Uh, only on occasion do they become federalized. One of those examples, of course, is being mobilized and deployed uh, to go to war or peacekeeping or other kinds of federalized missions. But other than that, the National Guard generally in peacetime belongs to the governor of that state. And then in 2010, I went to cover the Operation Vigilant Guard exercises going on in Chicago, Illinois, and they were conducting drills like meth lab takedown and terror drills where gun-wielding terrorists were taken hostage and had chemical weapons. But here's the kicker. They had Polish troops actually there supposedly observing the activities that were going on, but we in fact filmed the Polish troops participating in these exercises who helped take out the terrorists and then round up the hostages and run them through a decontamination unit. The day after we shot this footage, we interviewed Jose Santiago, who is the executive director of the Office of Emergency Management for Chicago. And he flat out lied and said that the Polish troops were only observing, they were not participating in any way. Today we were at an exercise, uh, some Polish military were taking, were involved in the exercise. Is that going to be the same with this exercise? Right now, with the, the uh, Polish uh, folks that were involved in this particular exercise, they were there as observers. They are visiting the country, uh, and uh, they are one of our sister uh, cities that we, we, we go ahead and we train with all the time. So they came in and they were observing and watching how we handle our stuff, and then, you know, sharing information back and forth of what happens in, in Europe as opposed to what happens in America. Okay. But are they going to be involved in this particular exercise today or no. observing? No, 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 just observing. Notice we asked him twice, and he clarified that no way were they participating in any of these events. So put all this together. 
We have the National Guard actively conducting gun confiscation exercises on American soil. We also have them actively doing it after natural disasters. But now, due to the pushback from organizations like InfoWars and other alternative media outlets, they don't say gun confiscation exercises anymore. They're conducting wellness checks. They're just going to make sure you're okay. Upon an evacuation notice, the subdivision of Overton, the, the residents chose not to leave. So we are doing a door-to-door -door wellness check. Now, I have nothing against the troops out there participating in these exercises. They're following orders, right? But it's important to educate them on the fact that when they say they're conducting wellness checks, this is a euphemism and code for gun confiscation. Just remember that next time you're asked to either carry out these orders or you're being one of the victims of these illegal orders. Remember, you have to stand up at this time and stand up while they're conducting these drills before it happens in real time because you might not have a leg to stand on. This is Rob Dew reporting for InfoWars.com and InfoWars Nightly News. If you like reports like these, please consider becoming a member of PrisonPlanet.tv. It supports everything we do here, and your membership can be shared with up to 20 people at the same time. That's 20 InfoWarriors for the price of one, so please consider becoming a member today. Thank you. The facts are in. The studies are legion. Sodium fluoride and other toxic members of the fluoride family are devastating the health and cognitive ability of the American people. So why are the social engineers adding it to the water? Simple, dumb down the host population that the parasitic technocracy is feeding on. We may not have been able to get fluoride out of the water supply yet, but we can help to get it out of our bodies. I am extremely excited to announce the exclusive InfoWars Life Fluoride Shield formulation, fusing six of the best documented ingredients from around the world to help the body remove not just toxic fluoride residues from the body, but a whole host of toxic substances. Let's take a stand against the globalist by blocking their poisons with Fluoride Shield. I use Fluoride Shield every day. Secure your Fluoride Shield and other pioneering formulations at InfoWarsLife.com today. Let's start cleansing our bodies now and support the InfoWar at the same time. That's InfoWarsLife.com.